Hi there. Welcome to Grab Your Jars and this video is going to show you how to make raspberry jam using Pomona's Universal Pectin. If you haven't already watched my supplies and prep video for making jam, go ahead and do that because that's going to go ahead and get you started and then once you've watched that you're going to want to come back to this video. Thank you and let's move on. The Pomona Universal Pectin people have done a really good job providing instructions on how to make jams and jellies with their product. So we're going to go ahead and follow their instructions. So they're telling me to take a half a teaspoon of their calcium powder and mix it with a half a cup of water. So I've already poured my calcium powder because I know this is a half a teaspoon. I've measured it before. I've poured it into an eight ounce jelly jar. And I've already poured my half a cup of water in. And now I'm just going to put a lid on here. And I'm going to shake it really well. This is just, I'm just going to mix it up this way. And then I'm going to just let it sit. I'm just going to set it aside and let it sit. I have taken my raspberries and I have poured them into a bowl. I'm going to work with a gallon at a time. And because they're already pretty soft, because they've been frozen, um, and there's a lot of juice in here, I'm not going to put them food, through the food processor because I do like to have fruit. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my potato masher, and I'm going to just start crushing my fruit. And really, this is just to your desired consistency. If you like to have big chunks, don't crush it for as long. If you like everything to be pretty squished up, then just crush them longer than you, or longer than I do. I also wanted to show you the consistency of my fruit after I have smashed it with my potato masher. So, as you can see, it's pretty chunky. I actually even have a couple of whole smashed berries in here because this is the consistency we like our jam. Again, this is to whatever consistency you like when you're making your jam. I don't have any sugar, I don't have any pectin, and I have not put any calcium water in here yet. I am going to measure out my fruit because this is pretty precise in order to get it to gel properly. So my recipe calls for four cups of fruit. So I'm actually, because I'm going to double my recipe, I'm going to measure out eight cups of fruit and go ahead and put them in my pot. I've set my pot of raspberries on the stove. I actually ended up tripling my recipe because those two gallon bags ended up making about 12 cups. So I'm tripling my recipe. Now, if you were making something that called for lemon juice and there are blueberries, mulberries, elderberries, apple, there's a, you know, sweet blackberries. There are some recipes that do call for a little bit of lemon juice, but raspberries don't, so I'm not adding any lemon juice. It does now call for my calcium water. Calls for two teaspoons of calcium water. So because I've tripled my recipe, I'll put in six. And you want to stir that in really well. and turn my stove on and start heating this up. While my fruit and calcium water is heating up on the stove, now is the time to mix your sugar or whatever sweetener you're going to use with your pectin. So if you're going to use honey, you can use as little as a half a cup of honey. If you're going to use sugar, it recommends to use at least three quarters cup. And since I like to use the minimum amount of sweetener, that's what I'm going to use is a three quarters cup. I'm going to go ahead and dump my sugar in. And, all right. And again, since I tripled my recipe, I've got in six teaspoons of pectin. And I have actually two and a quarter cups of sugar. I am back to the stove. And I am not adding my sugar pectin mixture yet. I am going to bring this fruit and calcium water mix to a boil. And while I'm waiting for that to boil, I am going to be stirring it occasionally because I don't want it to burn through the pan. You're going to want to 
let the fruit and pectin and calcium water and sugar mixture get back to a full boil before you turn the heat off. We're almost there. And that's looking like a pretty good boil. I'm going to go ahead and turn my heat off. I just tasted this raspberry jam and it's still a little tartar than we like it. So I went ahead and added another three cups of sugar and I'm going to let it come to an, a boil again. Make sure that sugar stirred in really well. And in the meantime, I'm going to get my jars out of this other pot. At this point, you're going to want to get your boiling bath water on the stove and get it moving. I have my jars filled, and now I am going to wipe the edges, the rims, the sides, with a clean washcloth. This is really important on jam because it does tend to make kind of a sloppy mess, or at least I do. And if you don't have all that cleaned off your rims and your edges, you might not get a good seal. I've got my jars all cleaned up, and now I'm going to go ahead and put my lids on because they're nice and hot. And then I'm going to be putting this into my boiling bath water that is now boiling. You want to put your screw bands on firmly tight. Don't crank down on it real hard, but just firmly tight. My boiling bath water is at a nice rolling boil and I'm going to go ahead and put my hot jars in there. And again, I did do two different sizes so that I could fit them all in there and still have it covered with boiling water. Because I'm using a large pressure canner and I happen to have spare racks, I'm going to go ahead and put that rack on. Put the rest of my jars in and hope that they get covered. If not, I'll put more water in my handy little pot. I want these covered by at least an inch of water in order for them to process properly. So put the lid back on and I let this get back to that rolling boil so again I am using a pressure canner but I'm using it as a boiling bath water which means I am NOT going to be putting my I'm not gonna lock my lid down onto here and let it build pressure I'm just putting the, I'm just putting the top on my pot that's all my boiling bath water is at a nice rolling boil so I'm gonna start timing and it says to process these for 10 minutes. Another side tip for you when you're doing jelly and you're processing in, in your boiling bath water, um, what the instructions say is that you would boil it an extra one minute for every thousand feet of altitude that you live. My timer's going off, so I'm going to take my jars out of here. Remember when you're taking the lid off? Ooh, to open it away from you. Because you'll get steam and probably get water as well. Go ahead and take my jars out. So I had no breakage with any of my jars. So with this pot of boiling water, I can actually use the same pot to sterilize my next batch of jars if I'm ready to do another batch. And I am going to go ahead and do that. After you take your jars out of the pot, you want to give them time to cool off and seal. If you have any questions on how to check for a seal, watch my video called, How Do You Know If My Jars Have Sealed? Also, at the very end of your processing, as always, I wash my jars and when they're clean and dry. I put some kind of label on them so that I know what they are later and put them in storage. All right, if you have any questions, put them below in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And if you like my video, hit subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one.